If you haven't used WebSim yet, you need to check it out. It lets you build websites and applications without needing to know any code. And I would say it's the most fun AI I've ever used, but it can be a bit mysterious. So in this video, I'll show you how to get the best results. And on this channel, I always try to give a balanced take and not overhype things. So at the end, I'll give you a few of the shortcomings of WebSim. Okay, let's go. You can log into WebSim with your Google or Discord account. And once you do, the first thing you should do is go into the settings and change the default model. By default, it's Haiku, which is a fast and cheap model, but it's not really up to speed for coding. You wanna go in and change that to Sonnet 3.5. And how I would start with WebSim is look through other people's creations and find ones you like to use and then iterate on those. So I find this worker management dashboard that's pretty cool. And on this workers section, it actually works. So you can edit a row, change a value, save it, and actually it shows up on the website. So it's a really great start. Now, if you wanna take it from this point and refine it further, what you do is you click on this toolbar up here, and that's gonna pop up all the prompts that got you to this point. So every creation in WebSim is an accumulation of a bunch of different prompts and iterations to get you to the current state. So it's really nice that it shows you all that right here. All right, so let's try to do an update here. So the settings button doesn't work, it's just the workers one. So let's just ask it to make the settings button work. So to make that change, you click back here, and then you just say, let's just say make the settings button clickable. Okay, it's come back with an update. It took about a minute for Claude 3.5 Sonnet to go away and code the updates I requested. One thing you'll notice every time you do a new update to the prompt, it has a new series of letters and numbers up at the top. And what that represents is that unique series of prompts that got you to this point. So now in your history, you're gonna see this web sim and you can see the updates you did to it. The original person who worked on it is not gonna see those updates unless they go searching for them. So that's kind of cool. You can just take what someone else created and keep building and refining on top of it. And now if you click on the settings button, there we go. It just built some settings for us. And I didn't even have to put in the things like the theme and the language and the email notifications. It kind of made this up for me. So that's the nice thing about WebSim. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure. You can give it some really vague prompts and it can kind of do it as it thinks it should be done. Or you can be very specific in your prompting. I'd recommend bookmarking or a good copy. Because what can happen is sometimes you can keep going and you hit a situation where it breaks and you want to go back to your last good checkpoint. So I find the bookmarks is really handy for that. So to do that, you just go in the top right, say create new bookmark, and it just adds it to the bookmark bar on the left. And at any time, you can just pop this out and just go to the version you want. Okay, so let's go back and now create our own web sim right from scratch. And I'll show you a few tricks along the way. So if you go back to the home page, you go to the top bar. This is where you put in the prompt you want to start with. In this case, I'm going to say create a quiz about 2024 current events. Have five questions and use the AI format of the attached image. And then you can actually attach images in here. So you can attach the look and feel you want for the website you're building. And the nice thing about WebSim is because it's using Claw 3.5 Sonnet, it's been trained on up-to-date information into 2024. So it actually gives you current events, unlike some other large language models. Okay, so it's built it and even put the, the countdown timer on here, like I have on my screenshot that I uploaded. So that's really cool. I'm surprised I got that one part right. And then the format looks pretty similar. And that's cool. So when you select the answer, then it gives you the next button and it tells you a bit about the history of that thing. This is really cool. And then it tells you how much time you have left when you select your answer. All right, well, I won't give all the answers away. I'll, I'll put a link to this quiz in the description of the video so you can try it yourself. So there's probably gonna come a time when you're building WebSim that you actually wanna take it outside of WebSim and keep going outside of it. Or you just wanna host it separately from WebSim so they can go to it on your website. And the way you do that, if you look at the top three button menu here, is there's a download button. What it does is download an HTML file. Now, if I open that up in VS Code, I can see it's really a collection of HTML and JavaScript. But you can also take this HTML file and put it back into Claude, for example, and then iterate on it from there. It's also nice because this HTML file is totally self-hosted. So I could just open it up in my browser by just clicking on the HTML file. Or I can upload it to a web server somewhere and just host it anywhere. It's totally self-contained. So I think WebSim and applications like it have a really big future. They're just so fun to use and so easy to use. A few drawbacks I found though. The first one is it used to be totally free. Now it does have a paid tier and a free tier. The free tier is still very generous, but I think that could come down over time. So that's one thing to watch out for. The second thing is I've had some good luck with it, but there is some times where I need to get something done in the application. And when it does do the change, it ends up breaking the application. So you have to go back again and try to redo it again. It just gets into a bit of a vicious loop. And then the third one would be, right now, always builds HTML and JavaScript, which are fine for kind of simple little toy applications. But if you're building a serious application and you have a lot of developers, for example, you're probably gonna wanna write it in something like React or Next.js. But I think those kind of updates will come soon. Hope you enjoyed the video and are having an amazing day. 
I'll talk to you in the next one.